Um, Paul Richards here, Chief Streaming Officer at PTZ Optics. Matthew Davis, Product Manager. Uh, As you can see, we're in black and white in honor of our History of Live Streaming, which is going to air this Friday, July 29th on YouTube Live. Woohoo! Yay, history. And today is vlog number 10. Yeah, lucky 10. Lucky number 10, <laughs> and we're going to talk about power? Yeah, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about power. Um, and more specifically, power over Ethernet. Um, so going back not too far in the Wayback Machine, we were always told never, ever, ever, ever to run power alongside your signal data cables. Um, as VoIP began to take uh, a little bit more of a stronghold uh, and replace existing phone systems, however, um, a problem presented itself. Uh, and that problem was the fact that uh, traditional phones got their power from the main system. VoIP phones, on the other hand, were not able to receive power over the network. So in 2000, um, we had Cisco come up with the first successful, albeit proprietary um, POE solution. Um, within a few short years, by 2003, the IEEE had created a uh, standard around this, 802.3AF. Um, so the POE standard started out by defining uh, the ability to send up to 15.4 watts over network cabling uh, to power a device. Fast forward to 2009, and the standard was updated for PoE Plus uh, with the ability to provide 25.5 watts of power. Now, because technology can never sit still, we have PoE Plus Plus on the horizon now. Um, they're saying about 2016, 2017, uh, it should become a standard, and it'll have the ability to send up to 96 watts down that Ethernet cable. Wow, that's a lot of power. Um, so let's think about that for one moment. What can you do with 96 watts of power? Um, if we were to think about it for a moment, modern 60-inch displays could be powered by that one single cable now that also provides them their network connection. Uh, modern laptops could easily be powered by this. Um, it, it's just really, really exciting to think about the devices and the ease of installation that's coming. Um, now, I'm going to go out a little bit of a limb. I know recently we had talked a little bit with our Go Green initiatives uh, about solar panels. Something that's always intrigued me with uh, PoE switches would be the ability to have basically a solar panel that has PoE, it outputs, goes to a switch that's able to manage the power. This would mean almost anybody could easily set up their own solar panel system. Maybe not the mounting, but at least getting the network up and running for it. Um, I don't think anybody's doing that, but it'd be oh, neat to see. Sweet. And kind of coming back to the cameras, we talked about PoE for the cameras. Yes. Um, so if you saw the vlog about five or six uh, episodes ago, we talked about how Wi-Fi Texas has PoE injectors that you can buy. Yeah, and in fact, they just came out with a really nifty new solution that uh, is actually able to sit there and, yet again, going a little greener, it's able to disable the power depending on what it needs so that you're not getting phantom draws. And I think we're going to have them on the live webinar sometime in August. I'm not exactly, can't remember exactly which time, but Fantastic. they have actually switches, like eight port switches that are like $100. Yeah, to add, they have some wonderful, uh, what they call like uh, mid spans. So that if you've got an existing network switch, and you don't want to spend the buku bucks to upgrade to a PoE enabled network switch, you can throw one of their mid spans in line. Um, and I believe. Uh, don't quote me on this, that they're able to achieve up to gig speeds. Well, that sounds awesome. So look forward to some more information about PoE on that webinar. And uh, hopefully that was a great little history on the PoE. Yeah. Over Ethernet. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, everybody.